Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture you learned how to interact with the objects in your scene by using the event set component. And now that you know how this component works and also have the required knowledge to understand the A-frame cursor and the A-frame animation system, we can finally have a look at gaze-based interactions, also known as fuse-based interactions. Here in our scene we have all the interactions that we created in the previous lecture, so as a quick recap, when we click on the left red box, we target the green box and change its material color property value, and when we click on it, we can set it back to green. When we click on the center red box, we target the blue box and change the value of the visible component to true. And when we click on it, we can set it back to false. And when we click on the right red box, we target the yellow box and change the back 3 property values of the position component. And when we click on it, we can set them back to their initial values. Well, as anticipated in the previous lecture, if you tested this project with a Google Cardboard, a Google Daydream or a Samsung Gear VR headset, all the interactions in our scene would also work as gaze-based interactions out of the box, no pun intended. But at the moment we still have to use the mouse on a standard desktop to fire the synthetic click events, because by default the cursor is gaze-based only on mobile devices. The easiest and fastest way to test your A-frame projects is to use Glitch. So for example, if I copy this code and paste it to a new Glitch project and then click on the Show Live button, I get the web link to my A-frame scene that I can now visit at this URL address. Again, as you learned in lecture 18, bear in mind that if you'd like the sky to be white in VR mode as well, you need to create an A-sky primitive in your scene. I'm going to show you this in practice with a video that I created by recording the screen of my Samsung Galaxy. And as you can see, when I look at the entities, I can trigger all the synthetic events that we set for the objects in our scene. But this is not ideal in terms of uh, user experience, because we are not providing the user with enough visual feedback to understand what is going to happen and how long to wait before something might happen. I'm going back to brackets and our live preview, so we can have a look at how to improve the gaze-based cursor, which now is the main element that controls all the interactions. First of all, I'm using the Fuse property, so that I can set its value to true. And in this way we can keep working on the cursor and have an idea of what the mobile VR experience is going to look like without the need to test our project continuously. Indeed, if I now look at the entities, you can see that I can trigger gaze-based interactions on standard desktop as well. And again, if you were not aware of the interactions that we had built in our scene, without any visual feedback from the cursor, you may just wonder if our input is really going through or if something will happen. So, to provide visual cues and improve the user experience, you can add animation to the cursor and have its duration match the value of the cursor fuse timeout property that you can use to control how long the user needs to stare at an entity before triggering a synthetic click event and has a default value of 1500 milliseconds, so one and a half second. Let's put this into practice and by now you should be familiar with these lines of code that I'm going to write. So I nest the animation system inside the cursor entity, I attach the attribute HTML attribute, to transform its scale up to 3, 3 and 3, which will result in a sphere with a radius of 1.5 cm. Then I set its duration to 1500 milliseconds, that is the current fuse timeout value. 
I attach the begin HTML attribute and fill it with the cursor fusing value to specify that the animation will start when the cursor is fusing on another entity, that is when the raycaster component is intersecting another entity. I'll reload the page and test its behavior before attaching one last HTML attribute, so that you can better understand its resulting effect. As you can see, the visual feedback provided by the cursor is not very effective yet, because after the animation finishes, we should be able to set the cursor scale back to its initial value. And you can easily achieve this by using the fill HTML attribute and setting its value to backwards. I'll reload the page for this change to take effect. And this is exactly what we were after. Of course, you can tweak the animation system to further customize and improve the cursor visual feedback. For example, you could set the animation easing to linear, which would provide the user with more precise timing for visual cues. and maybe bring both the animation duration and the fuse timeout values down to one second. Well, I'm quite happy with it. And before concluding this lecture, I'll show you the result in VR mode again with another video that I recorded after updating the code in the glitch project. As you can see again here, we are completely aware that our interactions are being processed now. And we also have a clear idea about how long it's going to take for the synthetic click events to be fired. So this is how you can modify the cursor component in a frame to provide the user with a useful feedback for gaze-based interactions which is going to result in a much better user experience for your web VR projects. There is still something that we can do to further improve our gaze-based interactions and performance in general, though. I'm talking about selective intersections, but for this, I'll see you in the next lecture.